Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. It's very common in games that you initially can type in your character's name or the name of an object or something like that. In Skyrim's case, you customise your character and then you are able to input your name and then throughout the game um, you'll see little bits that reference your name. So let's get started. So I have my basic racing game here and I am going for a fully voiced game. So my limitation is I won't always be able to use the word, but if I have like wanted tickets or police reports or something, it'd be cool just to see it print my name out. And it'd be cool if I can do it in dialogue as well. So what I'm thinking is I'll have like a random NPC you walk up to and be like, hey, what's the name of your car? Which at the moment, that's just my car. You know, everybody calls their car something like people call special objects things. So... I'm figured he can ask you your car's name and then a box will pop up you can type in your car's name and then he'll repeat it but he won't actually repeat it but then we can use it later on in quests and stuff so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag on one of my basic NPCs so I've got my basic NPC here it really doesn't need to be anything special so I just drop him there let's give him a funky name so we'll call him NPC I don't know Spike and I'm going to populate his name so I'll just put Spike in and then we need a dialogue so I'm going to make it auto trigger as well so I'm going to come back to my narrative dialogue folder and I'm just going to create my basic dialogue just to initiate it I'll call it Spike Car Name because that's his name and that's what he's going to do so the first thing I'm going to do is come into the class defaults and I'll just modify his name on narrative speakers just to be Spike just so it looks right I'll make sure as well that I've given him a tag, which is very important. It uh, allows narrative to find it, so I'll just call him Spike. There we go. So in the dialogue, let's say you walk up to him and he just says um, nothing for the first one. And then I will drag down and say, let's do dialogue line. I'll say, yo, name's Spike and, and my ride's in the shop. Her name's Lucy. What's your ride's name? Something like that. You know, you can do anything you want. Yo, what's your name? Where are you from? Traveller? Oh, anything you want. And then what I'm going to do after this has a I'm actually just going to insert a blank node for Spy. And the reason we're going to do this is we're going to let him say your name Spy random, yeah? And then we're going to set this dialogue line to be infinite so it never gets past it. He's not saying anything, but it'll never get past it. And then after this is where the player will respond and will say, hey, my name's player, my car's name is blah, blah, blah. And I'm using Narrative 3.2 for this. So if you don't have Narrative 3.2, it'll be ever so slightly different for you. But in Narrative 3.2, I can just come up and set the duration to never, so it never ends. If you're still in Narrative less than 2.0, just come and overwrite the get line duration. And then all you do is check if the ID equals the node that you want to freeze on. So in this case, it would be uh, that one. And then you tell it to be 99999 or something. And then after this, so let's just assume the player's typed something in. So I can come in and I will say, sub, my ride's name is, and he'll say the ride's name. But when I want to actually append a customization variable kind of thing in narrative, all you do, just like the format text node, is use curly braces. So I'm just going to add a curly brace here and put player's car name like that and then cl close it with curly brace. And you can see it said player's car name there. So I'm going to tell it to auto select this so it automatically plays it as well. But in the option text, I'm going to set to something like car name is because otherwise it's going to render the curly brace in the option text and we don't want that. We only want the text to do it. And then I'm going to make sure the duration is set to the default. There we go. So in order to actually use this variable, we need to store the actual car name somewhere or the value you want. Now we could store it on the player, but I'm in my instance, I'm going to store it on the game instance because then I've always got access to it. So I'm just going to come into my game instance, my custom one. If you've never created a custom game instance before, all you need to do is to come to your blueprints, new blueprint class and search for game instance. And then just to actually use it, you go to edit, project settings, maps and modes, and then you can set your game instance here. The benefit of a game instance class over just storing it on your player is that the game instance class persists from the start of the game or all the way until you end the game no matter how many levels you jump between whereas the player will reset every time you jump a level so it's nice to keep it alive when we need it so i'm just going to come and call it players car name and i'm going to set it to a type of text because that's probably what we're going to input it as and i can compile and save and now we just need to tell narrative where to get the player's car name from and that's really easy to do if you are going to be using this variable a lot I, i'd advise putting on the master dialogue instead but if you're not going to use it often so in my case i'm probably going to use 
use the player's card name in dialogue later or quests or something so i do want to overwrite it so i'm actually just going to tell this dialogue to use my master dialogue as it's supposed to be there we go and then in my master dialogue i'm going to come back into it but this is the exact same uh, if you are just doing it in here and i'm going to overwrite the function of get string variable and then all i'm going to do from variable name is drag off and just do a switch because it's nice and clean i can connect it up and then i'm going to add a pin and then for each of the variables you want to check against just add a switch case so if you've got a custom player name like so you add player name in uh in my case i've got uh what did i call it it needs to be the exact same as well so i'm going to come and change this to players car name because that seems to be the standard like so and then in here i'm just going to set the, the the name pin name to players car name like so if it's default i'm just going to make it return nothing because we don't need it to do anything in the instance of players car name we actually need to tell it which string to return for the player's car name really simple so all i'm going to do is right click and do get game instance if you've put it on your player just do get player pawn or just get access to the variable however you need to i'm going to cast this to my gi main so i can get access to the variable and then all i will do from here is do get player's car name copy the return node and drop it in like so it will auto convert it to a string so that's fine that's it and um, the only other thing i'm going to do is on the cast failed i'm just going to make it go to the return as well just so we're not halting execution or making it wait and then the return node for default is here so i'm just going to highlight this and just wrap it in a comment players car name because then it's nice and out of the way just stick up there and you can add as many pin in place where the player's from or favorite whatever you can save the answers and just keep reusing them like this so i'm going to hit compile and save and in theory that's it it will now actually print the player's car name so if we were to go back into our game instance and set a test default test name we compile and save assign him his dialogue there we go if i walk up to him now in theory it should halt our execution until we press enter and then it should tell us the car name yo name spike my ride is in the shop her name is lucy what's your ride's name oh there you go test name see it's working how cool is that so we know that's working already so when the player says sup my name is blah 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 we can just make him come off and say something like um interesting nice car name uh, I, I suppose we could make it ever so slightly better as well if we just drag another node off as well and then just do a positive and a negative one what there we go so we've got a positive and negative one of interesting nice car name what kind of is that your choice i guess you know those kind of attitudes and then on the player um i can just generate a random number so if i go to my generate a random number if you've not seen my previous tutorial on how to generate random numbers it's built up of two main things it's really easy on your master dialog you just store a random number type of integer and then you can reuse it whenever you need it and then you create a custom narrative event called generate random number and all it does is cast the current dialog to your master dialog random integer from a value i'm passing into it so i'm passing two because i want to generate between two numbers and then set the random number on the master dialog and then the final key to it is the custom condition which is has random number that all it does is check if the current random number equals the random number you want it to and you can get really funky with it and say more than or less than if you're doing an rpg stats game but yeah so now i can come interesting Car name i can add a condition of is random number equal and i will say if it is equal to zero then it goes down this line shift right click and then i'll do shift left click here and then i'll say if it's equal to one then it goes down here so now it'll randomly choose when we first talk to him and say whether or not he likes our car name or not which if we just try it now uh, he says his name spike what's name my rides test name interesting nice car name but if we run up to him and do it again there we go so that's your well, what a weird name kind of thing so we know it's working and it adds a little bit of do it bit of change so on my specific dialogue i've just come in and set the player's avatar because i used that on my first person that's why i couldn't see anything and now the whole shot does look a lot better there we go so was, i'm spike blah, blah blah her name's lucy and then we can say something my name's test name okay perfect so that's all working so now we actually need to get on to actually setting that value and like how do we go about pausing narrative in the middle of dialogue and it's really really clever the way we do it So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and double click on the node I want to add the code to, which will be this one here. So just before we hold narrative, I'm going to double click into this one to activate an event here. And I'm going to come off and say, if we have only just started it, then don't do anything. Otherwise, if we're at the end of the dialogue, because the opposite of started is ended, then we need to actually go and create our widget. So we'll show the pick your name widget. So I'm going to come into my UI folder now, and I'm going to, I'll just put it here actually, because it is a main widget. I'll go user interface widget 
blueprint and I'll say use a widget and I'll call it players car name change and then we can start building it up so the first thing I'll do is I'll just add a canvas panel in this is just so it matches the full screen name change down here but if you want to add a button after your character customization you can do that as well then inside here let's first put a title in so this title will be what is your car's name under this I will add my editable input my editable text here because I, if you've got like a big description or something say minecraft books or rim world story notes or something you can just use the multi-line i'm just doing the dead basic one so i'm going to call it etb for editable text box and i'll call it name because we're going to be using this making sure it's ticked as a variable and then finally we're just going to come and add a button in for the player to actually confirm we could also hook into the entity key if we want to do and i'll call this btn save and finally it will just add some text inside here and i'll set this text to be set name there we go i'm going to set the text color to be black just because it'll look a lot neater oh, i'll set the vertical box to be size to content because then it fits nicely as you can see for the btn save i'm not going to make it full width i'll probably just make it right aligned like so and then the editable text box is currently invisible for some reason but that's fine um i'll add some padding to everything just to space it out a bit nicer because it's very crunched at the moment so i'll add a padding bottom of 10 to both of them and then to position the vertical box i'm just going to come up to the anchors hold control and shift and click on the bottom one to put it down there but I don't want to put it at subtitle level. It's a bit weird having it there. So I'm probably just going to bring it up by, say, 250. So when the screen loads, it'll be there. Yeah, that looks okay. Uh, for the text in here, it's not brilliant. So I'm going to come and set the color of it to be black. And we'll just add some fake text for now. There we go. So it's looking a little bit better. I'm going to come to my text here and I'll just give it an outline just so it stands out a little. There we go. So I've used the wrong control. I just need to come and make sure I get this box. That's one. That's why I wasn't getting a background or anything. And that looks a lot nicer now so i can space it out again i can give it a proper name of etb name we can type and it looks a bit grayed out so if i come and just set the color of the font to be black there we go so we can just clear that out we don't need it to say anything uh, but the first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to come and click on the button and i'm going to set it enabled to false because we don't actually want it to be active as soon as it spawns on the screen we want it to be disabled until you've typed something in it so with that i think for my basic example this is going to do nicely so on the button i'm just going to come and add a click event while we are here there we are and then we can start actually doing the code so i'm just going to add an event of on text change so this is when the user starts typing into it and i'm going to get the current text i'll convert it to a string so we can modify it and stuff and i will check the length of it is more than so let's say two characters so if you want to car call your car you know bob you can call your car bob and then if it's true then all we're going to do is actually just set the save button to active that's it the enabled so we'll say set is enabled and then we can plug it in like so but if it's if it's less than two characters then it should disable it and that's pretty much perfect functionality um, you could get more into it you could like check for spaces check for characters make sure it's an actual word kind of thing not crude you know anything you want but for my basic example that'll be fine if the user wants to type in random characters then their car's going to be called random character the first thing we need to do is we need to just get the game instance so i'm going to do get game instance and then i'm going to cast it to my gi main or if again if it's on your player cast it to whatever you need so i cast it to my gi main and then from here i'm just going to come off and do set player's car name and then what we want to set it to is the current text of this box here so i'm going to drag in my editable text box and i'm going to say get text and then I can plug it in like so. So you can see because they're both text, they've synced up nicely. And then after this, we actually now need to tell narrative that we've finished editing the name so we can turn narrative off. One way, so the way I'm going to do this is via using an event dispatcher because the only other way you could do it is with an event tick on here, which is absolutely awful. There's no need to check it. So what I'm going to do is create an event dispatcher here and I'm just going to call it on complete. So the form has been complete. We know it has. And then I'm going to drag this down here and just drop it right here as a call. And that's all that part's going to do. The next thing I'll make it do is just clear itself up. So I'll just do remove from parent. So once the form's hit complete and it saved it, it will tell everything it's complete, then just destroy itself, which is perfect. And that's the form done. It was that simple. So now jumping back to the narrative code, now that we've checked if we're running it at the correct time, on the false, I'm going to come and do create widget. And the class I'm going to set it to will be my new name change one here. I'm going to promote this to a variable just so we can remember it like so. And I'll call it player change form UI because we need it for later to get the text. And then I'm just going to come and add this to the viewport and then that'll actually render it on the screen. So now here's where the cool logic comes from. So what I'm going to do from this player form UI is I'm actually going to bind onto the on complete event dispatcher here so i'll drag off and do assign 
on complete so you can see it's already created my event and everything so this will now tell us once we've completed the form so we can carry on and tell narrative to continue so the way we're going to tell this on complete to carry on because at the moment this part here is going to render the ui and then it's going to be stuck here until we tell narrative to continue so the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to connect to the narrative ui and tell it that we've basically triggered the enter key we're going to bypass it and it works really really well so from this on complete event i'm just going to do get player pawn and I'm going to cast it to my current character or wherever you've stored your narrative. If it's on your game instance, you play a controller, get that version. So I'm going to cast it to my first person character. Then from here, I'm going to get the narrative UI. And then all I'm going to do is just tell it to handle enter key, which is narrative's version of you pressed enter, just like that. And it's a very basic start. That's pretty much it. So just while debugging this, I've actually made a slight version change to it, which is quite interesting. We don't actually need this blank node here at all. So we can delete this off and just connect it back up. So you you don't need to tell it to wait or override the get line length which is perfect but the one thing you do need to do is untick auto select here but yeah so now if we come and actually try it we should see the form pop so if i run up to him now you can see hello name spike and then we see the player option and we see what's your car's name so we can come and say my car's name is uh, spike i don't know and then click set name and the player will say it just with the button click and he says nice car name so it is working and we've removed some nodes making the process a whole lot easier but the part of it I didn't like was how we could still see everything in narrative. If you think of Skyrim where the, the guard is talking to you, when it goes to character creation screen, you don't still see your dialogue options there or anything. So what I'm going to do is now actually hide these options. So it's literally focused on the player to say, what's your car name? And the player can come in, type it and click set name and then it will carry on. So it's really easy to do with the code we've already got. So all I'm going to do is come back to my event graph here. And the first thing I'm going to do is after we've bound the event to it, I'm going to copy the cast to my wherever my narrative ui is stored like so i'll move this down and then all i'm going to do from this narrative ui here is i'm going to go and get dialogue ui here and the dialogue ui and the narrative default ui if i load it up and the dialogue ui is this part here it controls all of the ui that the player sees so their options that the npc's text all of it so i'm actually going to temporarily just hide it because we don't need it on screen so i'll come in and set visibility and we'll set it to collapsed and we can plug it in and then all i'm going to do is copy this dialogue UI and set visibility down here just before we call handle enter key I'm actually going to paste it back in and then set it back to visible again and we're going to do it before the handle enter key just in case the handle enter key starts going on and adding dialogue options to the screen or if you've got a typewriter effect we want it visible before we do that and now if we try it see a proper screen with nothing else on it so we can come in yo name spike there we go it just says what's your name we've got no options we can click we can't do anything we can't even press enter because we've hidden all of the ui my hood granted is still showing but that's a bug that i've introduced so i'll come in and i can't click the button so i'll set my name to something cool like cali and it'll say the set names there if i delete names off we can't click it so i'll do cali and i click set name it says sup my ride is cali and it'll say what kind of name is that your choice again. there we go ladies and gentlemen a built-in narrative dialogue option select to where you can type in your own values and there's so much potential you can do with this player names is the most common one i've used it as the player's car in this case because my player is going to already have a name in the game but you can use it for anything you want if you're taking notes writing stories in game or anything you can do it with this method and it's really easy you could also come back to your widget and make it reusable so you could pass in the text of it and then you could pass it in the, the variable it needs to set it's super flexible super generic and it works so that's it ladies and gentlemen there is my player change name narrative thing what variables would you let the player change it to what else would you change about it have you upgraded to narrative 3.2 yet it's fantastic i'm loving all the new camera options so far so let me know below my name is decryption and what does he think he likes the car name there we go ladies and gentlemen please like comment and subscribe and i will see you next time